everybody. Um, thank you for uh, uh, listening to this uh, series of my lectures of uh, strategic marketing. Uh, I would uh, <coughs> I would like to urge everybody, uh, every one of my students, to please join this group uh, because uh, in that group uh, I'll be uploading various uh, supporting documents and various things. That you can get to download um, and uh, I'll be uploading all these videos uh, over this Facebook group so that everybody can get to access it and can get to uh, watch these videos uh, later in time so please join this group so uh, let me introduce myself I'm uh, Harun Asala Khan um, and uh, I welcome you all to this uh, uh, course called strategic marketing First of all, we are going to discuss a uh, few concepts about uh, marketing and strategic marketing and, and then we are going to go on explaining things in a detailed fashion. I would urge you all to please keep a notebook, journal or something to write down so that whenever uh, I can get to explain things, you will be able to uh, write down and uh, you can uh, once you can get to write down all these things you can later you can get to recall it and you can uh, uh, refer it back whenever that you want uh, you can also get to play this video over and over again if you um, if you have uh, if you are unable to understand a few of the concepts so uh, this video is, uh, is, uh, is for you so let's get on with these uh, concepts of uh, strategic marketing Okay, now the fourth concept is exchange and relationship. Now, what is exchange? The act of obtaining desired object or objects, which can be both tangible and intangible, from someone by offering something in return. <coughs> so that's, uh, that's the definition that uh, uh, the exchange is. The act of obtaining desired object or, or something which can be tangible or intangible from someone by offering something in return. <clears throat> it's something that uh, the, the marketer needs to ask, what do I want and what do the customer want? And how can we exchange, uh, how can we do the exchange uh, in which uh, I can offer and I can give something to the customer and and can, can take something from the customer that I want. So the result of knowing an agreement is what we call a deal. <clears throat> so marketing consists of action taken to create, maintain and grow desirable exchange relationship with the target audience involving an offer. Now that's the same definition that we have discussed earlier in marketing. It's about creating, maintaining, and uh, expanding the customer relationship, which is a profitable customer relationship with the target audience through offering. Okay. Marketing process. <coughs> there are five different steps to marketing process. One is understanding the marketplace and the needs and wants of the uh, customers uh, and see if there's a demand for it. How can we do that? We can do that by conducting co consumer research and analyze uh, and analyzing the collecting data, uh, the collected data. We need to find out what does the, uh, what, uh, the what do the customers want and what are their need and and uh, what is the demand for it which means that uh, whether the what the customers is actually wanting are they willing to pay for it or not now the next step is actually designing the uh, designing intelligently the marketing strategy and how can uh, which consists of how and through which offer consumer want and need can be fulfilled how can we design an offer how can we design something a product or service or an offer or value 
which can fulfill the want and the need of the customers customers and consumer and uh, and uh, in such a way that it would give superior value value and customer are willing to pay for it so how can we do that what are these strategies how can we create the product how can we deliver it how can we communicate it uh, these are basically what we called design marketing strategies and then then we need to create the market offer that have value which can satisfy the want and need of the consumer first we can think of of uh, the strategy how can it can be fulfilled and then we can uh, whether it would be feasible for the consumer to uh, to get those products or not whether they would consider it as a value or not and by designing these strategies we can then create the offer and uh, create the offer in such a way that the customer would feel that they would be getting some sort of value offer can be in the form of product service information experience an idea or or whatever the, we we did discuss that earlier in the uh, in the earlier slides then then we need to engage the cus customers and build profitable relationship which means we need to engage them we need to make them aware about uh, our product and services we can uh, we can tend to create a, a more profitable relationship with them and making the customer happy so that and hook them through various marketing activities so that they wouldn't leave us and uh, would go to to our competitors next we need to capture the value in return from the customers and in that way that would make us uh, some profit and in terms would build the customer equity uh, and uh, that would also create or build respect in the eyes of of the consumer the consumer would feel that the uh, the, uh, the the offer is valuable and the companies that is creating the uh, this value is also valuable so we uh, will be able to build uh, customers equity in the um, for the firm okay now in order to remember all these five steps uh, there's basically a simple uh, acronym which is uh, undiscover cvm pbe which is un stand for understanding the marketplace needs and wants of the consumer understanding the needs then designing designing intelligently uh, intelligent marketing strategies which is dis and create offer that have value cov and engage customer and build profitable relationship engage and build relationship which is er and then capture value and return which is cv make profit mp mp and build cus customers equity which is be so if you tend to remember all these uh, letters you can easily create a marketing process okay in a visual way this is what the marketing process looks like first we need to understand the marketplace and understand the want and need how can we do that through various service through understanding the uh, the market and then designing the customer value driven marketing strategies you need to come up with a plan or a strategies how can uh, the the needs and wants can be fulfilled then you have to construct a uh, integrated marketing program and deliver superior value you have to create an offer which would uh, deliver superior value to the consumer and then engage the customer build profitable relationship and create customers uh, delight which means make customer happy and then capture value from the customers in return in order to generate profit and then uh, build customer equity so this is what the marketing process looks like right okay <clears throat> there are basically two parts for it create value engage and build a relationship and then capture value and build equity in return right so there are two part of the marketing process now 
we have customer relationship management and uh, customer lifetime value. Now by definition, CRM or customer relationship management stands for customer relationship management is a comprehensive approach for creating, maintaining and expanding customer relationship, which means it's a comprehensive approach. There are two words here. One is called comprehensive, which means way of doing business that touches every business area, which means we need to be customer in centric, which means we whatever that we do, whatever that we uh, uh, in order to create the product in our uh, services in order to uh, how the the value or the products can be created or the the creation process the uh, the process of development the process of quality checks and all that and uh, how it's going to be delivered to the customer consumer and consumer and uh, what the product uh, how can the product uh, be of certain value which can fulfill the customers need and want the entire operations of the company must be customer in customer centric so when we talk about comprehensive approach it's a it's basically a way of doing business that touches each and every business area and approach way of treating or dealing with something which is dealing with the customer and when we tend to uh, to tend to be customer centric we each and everything that we do each and everything product that we create each and everything that uh, the policies the procedures the systems the processes everything has to do with with the uh, with the customer or are creating superior value to the customer right it's not just delivering the product or the services it's it's about helping the customers so that uh, in every way so that the customer would feel that they are getting superior value or superior importance or superior benefits as compared to other competitors that exist in the market so so a strategy it involves in creating maintaining and expanding the customer relationship which is basically called the customer cycle um, okay customer lifetime value is actually a concept it is how much a customer is worth to the business throughout the business relationship, which means uh, if if the customer tend to stick with you and, and can get to buy your product and services over several years, how much uh, how much profit or how much business this customer is bringing to uh, to the to the business, how much uh, profit or how much amount of uh, revenue the customer is responsible for generating for the company so this is what we call customer worth or value of the customer right now when we talk about customer value it's not just the current customer value but the it in, also includes the future expected uh, expected um, bond of relationship which the customer would tend to tend to keep with the business so so simple C CLB formula is the average sale that the person is doing uh, for a year and number of repeated sale how many how many number of sales the customer is repeating what is the expected retention time how long the customer is tend to stick with the with the company and with the product and what is the profit margin for each and every product that the uh, con customer purchases? How much profit are we getting from, from that uh, product sale? So it's actually a simple formula. It's the average sale into number of repeated sales into expected retention time and times profit margin. So an example is actually given at the bottom. You can What you can do is that you can pause this slide here and you can go through all these formulas in order to calculate the customer lifetime value and uh, why do we need to calculate customer lifetime value why do we need to segregate each and every customers and uh, how can we uh, why do why is it necessary for uh, the business to calculate the lifetime value the main aspect is that uh, so that we can gain the competitive advantage in the market the more valuable customers that we have, the more revenue our business would generate. So, and that would give us a competitive advantage position in the market. 
So that's why we need to calculate the CLV so that we we tend to measure how how many customers do we have and how many customers and how much profit or uh, benefit we tend to generate from those existing customers and how long we'll be able to uh, generate those profit from those customers. So another reason for calculating the CLV or customer lifetime value is to guide intelligent decision making. It's another way of um, of uh, of deciding which customers are important, which are not important, which are generating more profit for us and which are generating less profit. What can we do with the customer who are generating less profit? Maybe we can offer them certain deals. Maybe we can offer them bundle deals and so that they would uh, purchase more and therefore our profit and our revenue would increase. Uh, uh, if, the, if there are certain customers who are already uh, generating more revenue, maybe uh, we can offer them a certain discount, maybe we can offer them a uh, certain uh, loyalty card so that uh, they would, uh, they would uh, communicate uh, those benefit with their uh, relatives and friends so that they would become our customers as well. So it's the intelligent decision making. How can we, uh, uh, which, which includes which customers needs to be uh, uh, treated in what manner, right? It's to analyze how much investment we need to put into each customer, which means uh, if, this, if, if a customer gets angry and the customer is not generating um, enough sale so do we need to do we need to um, offer them certain um, payback offer or certain uh, discounts or certain um, various offers so that they would uh, they would purchase more or is it is it necessary that uh, we should focus our energy and our focus our effort towards the consumer who are bringing more profit for the for the business so one other reason to calculate clv is to know how much investment to gain new customers which means that uh, if our current customers are generating certain number of revenues how much revenue are going to be generated if two or three or five or ten customers are added to our existing customer base so this is something the business need to calculate and this business need to keep track of so that uh, they would know whether they are going in the right direction or not okay then we come to the uh, the part related to segmentation targeting and positioning this is something what we call it STP. Okay. <clears throat> Segmentation is uh, actually dividing the total market into a smaller group that have similar wants and need to identify the target market. The, the only thing or the, uh, the only reason why we segregate or we uh, segment a market is so that we can get to get to identify or get to reach our target market or customers whom uh, who will be able to buy our product. So imagine that uh, the market segmentation is a natural result of the vast differences among the people. So basically what uh, what uh, what this quote is saying is that it's a natural way that the people are different from one another and uh, there are certain number of people who are who acts in a similar way, who belongs in a similar categories and uh, we need to categorize them we need to identify those categories and we need to identify similar people so that their wants and needs can be identified and uh, we can get to offer them something which which can help them to fulfill those wants and needs so how can we uh, filter the total market imagine that this market uh, is of three, 35 million people and uh, we need to we cannot we cannot offer 35 million people our products and services so and not everybody is going to buy it so who will buy your product and service we need to filter all these two people with the with the respect to certain uh, division and certain categories so there are four categories through which we can get to filter the total market 
one is called demographics which is which includes the income of the people their ages gender family uh, family style whether they live uh, with their family whether they have a big family or a smaller family their education level whether they are uh, they belongs to uh, high education a university college degree or uh, whether they are a high school graduate or whether they are illiterate or what and then occupation what profession uh, are they actually serving are they serving the the labor class are they serving the officer level uh, categories or are they uh, business executives or are they industrialist or what then ethnicity which uh, ethnic group the the people belongs to so there are, through this demographics filter there are various filters included in this so that by by targeting certain income group age and gender and family size group we will be able to filter the the people who doesn't fit our requirement and would allow allow to pass people who fits our requirement to the next phase which is the geographic location now geographic location uh, depends upon what our product and our services are uh, we tend to we tend to um, target the maybe the urban areas or the rural areas depends upon that and maybe when we talk about location we are talking about countries cities areas and various blocks and various um, people living in certain areas and all that so geographic location plays a very important role in uh, in in identifying our target market and next we have psychographics now there's an another filter uh, which is related to how the people think now when we talk about psychographics psycho relates to mindset so what are their lifestyle how they tend to live their life uh, are they uh, comfortable in living their life in a traditional manner or are they living uh, are they comfortable living in life in a modern manner what is their living standards what are their, their living lifestyle what are the things that they uh, like how do they live uh, what are their beliefs now that includes the religion aspects of, of that as well and uh, uh, whether they are uh, uh, Christian Muslim Jews or uh, Hindus or various uh, belongs to various ethnic groups and all that of really various religion uh, what uh, what the sects uh, the the people belong to and then values what values they hold for example uh, they may hold the tradition values they they tend to give value to their tradition their culture their moral and ethical uh, ways of living or maybe they are more liberal uh, liberal uh, they tend to create values uh, as they progress towards their life it it depends upon various things so if we tend to focus our uh, product towards certain life uh, uh, certain people that they are living in a certain uh, in a certain way that believes in certain uh, certain religion or uh, certain thoughts and and uh, and holds value to certain uh, certain ethical uh, ethical moral and values so we can get to filter all these and last but not the least the behavior aspect of uh, uh, of the consumer or, or the people how much uh, what are their buying pattern how much are they uh, using the uh, the product and the services how frequently are they buying it and uh, which quant how much quantity are they um, are they consuming uh, whether they are loyal or whether they are not loyal so after going through all these filters uh, our target market our only selected number of people are basically filtered out and that is what our target market is all about and that's those are basically the people who we can get to serve who we can get to offer the those people the product and the services we need to um, and then we need to understand uh, we need to understand first we need to understand their need want their problem their issues their uh, whether what uh, what their need and how much are they willing to pay for it and then we can get to design them uh, certain offer 
and uh, can define certain strategies how can those offer can uh, we can uh, get to provide them and uh, how they can uh, those offers can fulfill their um, their wants and needs <coughs> okay next why do we do the segmentation one of the reason is to identify the target market another is to put the company's effort focused towards certain categories of people because the company doesn't have the unlimited amount of resources or unlimited uh, amount of uh, knowledge or skills so they tend to focus or uh, they tend to put focus towards certain categories of people so that uh, they would get to understand them better they would get to understand their want and need and then according to their requirements they would be able to design certain products and services that would fulfill the certain number of people's need uh, why do we need to do the segmentation one of the reason is to create the competitive advantage in the market even <clears throat> now focusing towards a certain number of people would help us to create product and services better and by serving them better um, those products and services that would help the company to create a competitive advantage in the market to create its name to create its edge over the other competitors and last but not the least it's a way of managing the company resources more efficiently and effectively which means it's it's a better way to to serve the focus number of people rather than everybody because uh, as we we said earlier the, the the company resources are very limited and uh, the the way that we can get to save our resources and can uh, efficiently and effectively utilize those resources in order to create value so that certain number of people uh, want and need can be served and in return they would be able to give us certain uh, profit and revenues so this is uh, this is the reason why we do the segmentation uh, take segmentation um, example in this way suppose this uh, this is the population of a, of a city and we divide these population into three different categories of people from the behavioral aspect and the industry that we are serving is actually food so um, these people are full diet conscious which means they are very conscious of their health and uh, these kind of people are not diet conscious in which um, they can eat almost anything and not caring about their health and uh, these people are basically the people who have uh, who have begun to realize the importance of their health and uh, they tend to um, do little dieting they they have um, cared more about uh, more about their health they have started to realize that so the reason why we segment the market is so that we can get to divide them and then we get to conquer them through our product and services so if we divide them in, in three different segments now these people who are full diet conscious or more diet conscious we can offer them uh, a home cook uh, or ready to cook meal we can offer them food factories so that they can uh, they can make their own uh, um, meal at home and we can offer them vitamin drinks because they are full diet conscious therefore they would not be able uh, they will not be willing to get um, food which are uh, deep fried and all that so because they are very much health conscious so we can offer them these products and we can earn money through our these products and services now these kind of people who are not serious about their health we can get to offer them everything we can offer them fast food we can offer them uh, snacks we can offer them various baking items we can offer them almost everything so since they are not conscious about their health it's a very easy target or is there uh, we can get to we can get to offer them uh, each and everything we we then we get to carefully decide which product we need to offer them so that can bring us more profit similarly the case uh, with the with these people who are full diet conscious which product and services that we can get to offer so they, that can 
give us more profit and uh, last but not the least the little diet conscious people who have just begun to realize the importance of their health we can get to offer them a certain food related item that have low calories and low fat and maybe we can get to offer them uh, various food supplement uh, to boost their energies so this is something which we call the market segment so what is the target market as we already said the target of market are mainly in in uh, plain simple word are basically the people who uh, who are willing to pay for our uh, our product and services who would buy our product so actually target market is actually a process of evaluating each market segment attractiveness and selecting one or more segment to serve so when we talk about target market there are certain elements which needs to be considered whether they fit our um, they fit our business feasibility or not so when we talk about feasibility or uh, feasibility of the target market this is something which needs to be uh, evaluated so how can we evaluate the target market through filtration and through various segmentation we, we can get to arrive the target market but we need to find out whether this target market is appropriate for us for uh, profit or revenue generation or not in order to do that we need to evaluate whether what is the size and profitability of this target market which means how many number of people exist that are uh, that can buy our product and services whether they would be a long term customer or a short short term customer whether they are going to buy it for a certain number of months or years and uh, then they would stop buying it or whether they would stick long and uh, with our product and services and would give us uh, more uh, lasting revenues uh, revenue streams so another thing which needs to be um, evaluated or which needs to be checked is uh, uh, demand profit or uh, or and growth which means uh, they may be uh, they may be would they may be buying it now because there's a demand for it but in the future whether whether that demand is going to increase or decrease in the future that depends upon that whether the number of people that uh, that we are targeting or uh, would uh, would be willing to in the future would be willing to pay for whatever that we are creating or not and then comparator situation for those people how many other comparators or other companies exist that can serve them and how can we be able to compete with those uh, with those companies through our offers and, uh, and for the target market evaluation we also need to consider our resources whether do we have the equipment the skills the machines the people and various expertise in order to serve that target market or not uh the feasibility to enter and maintain the position if, if we enter into the market if we enter and we get to serve the target market whether um, we'll be able to hold our position whether we will be able to continue uh, continually supplying our uh, product and services to the target market or uh, um, over the longer period of time uh, will be able to uh, run out of resources so will it be feasible or not and then the interest of stakeholders how many people are basically involved uh, how can we uh, how can we parties and other groups uh, are there who um, who would be interested in us to in our in order to succeed uh, uh, who are willing and uh, would praying for our success of our company that uh, we'll be able to uh, give proper values and product and services to the evaluation uh, to the target market so this is something all everything needs to be considered for the target market for these number of people who are willing to give us the money and how these people will they bring um, longer uh, streams of revenues for the company or not so this is something which is called uh, target market so um, s t and then uh, p okay now now the, the in the in the current situation of the market there there are two kinds of market that exist one is called rush red ocean market 
and other is called blue ocean market red ocean market is actually a market where most uh, many competitor exist and they are all uh, targeting towards the same target market towards the same people and they offer similar product and services and you are basically one of them so in order to um, in order to generate revenue from the uh, same number of people you need to work extra hard you need to you need to see what what is uh, you need to really come up with a various uh, you need to come up with various products and various services and offer superior value and uh, only through superior value and through creating high value you will be able to get few customers and you will be able to generate uh, revenues but those revenues would be would be shared with the uh, with the other competitors because they are all willing to uh, offer similar products and the services so it would be very difficult for you to compete in that market so this is what we call the red ocean market but if you decided to enter into a, a location or or to serve people which are different and there are no other no or few fewer competitors that exist in in, in the market then you would have a better chance of um, getting more revenue and more profit and you would be um, you would be in a position to to prominently um, hold your position and to uh, create equity for your company so this is what we call blue ocean market so in order to compete with red ocean market you need to come up with a red ocean strategy how can you uh, able to create values and compete with your existing uh, competitors and still generate revenue and uh, in order to in order to compete in order to serve this market you need to come up with plan and various strategies uh, how can you create values that uh, would be superior and would be able you would be able to get more revenues and uh, hopefully if there are less competitors how can you compete with them and uh, how would you be able to serve your targeted customer for a longer period of time so these are basically two different kind of situation in, in the market now what is positioning positioning is actually the act of dealing uh, designing an offer that occupies a unique uh, clear place in the mindset in the mind of the consumer or customer with respect to its competing offers so it is something which is called owning the piece of the consumer's mind or uh, giving customers the experience with the product or the one that uh, one definition uh, definition that i actually like is the uh what core message that the company wants to hammer into the customer's mind related to the offer so this is this is more appropriate because in each and every uh, product that you uh, or services or the offer that you get to deliver to your consumer uh, there has to be a message that you need to that you need to communicate to your consumer or your customers so while uh, they they get to buy the the product and the services and uh, that would act as a reminder a recall with respect to your brand right so this is what we call positioning and what's the differentiation actually differentiating the marketing offer is to create superior customer value how can it be differentiated than other offer um, through for four p's now once you divide the total number of people that exist in the market into various segments in order to get to the target market now through when you get to uh, when you get to identify those people and how can you get to serve them the product and the services that can satisfy their want and need the only way that you can create a superior value and 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 can uh, convince them that it's uh, of higher value the only way that you can do that is to create an offer with with the with the four piece having a superior product giving a a, a price which is uh, which uh, which they think is, would del give uh, um, more value or or to make your product available to to a certain place which your your target customers uh, are living near and promoting in a such a way that would create interest in the mindset of the people so this is what we call marketing miss we we'll, we are going to discuss it uh, soon right so this is what we called positioning so when we get to talk about positioning positioning is generally um 
um, can be extracted by the tagline or the slogan take the example of red bull what lies it what lies body and mind and gives you wing now what they're actually communicating what the message uh, the consumer about the message what the marketers are trying to communicate to the consumers is that by drinking the the red bull your body gets vitalized your body gets energized and your mind would uh, would get refreshed and it would give you ring it would give you an out of um, an out of the world experience and it would make you feel good about yourself so this is something which is a, a tagline which is associated with an energy drink which is called red bull so this is a way that this is the message that you, they want to hammer into the mindset of the people so that whenever they get to buy or see a red bull ad this message would emerge from uh, this message which would uh, be recalled uh, from their mind and uh, this message would would uh, would intimidate them in order to buy that product or service now positioning can be of uh, um, with respect to the influence purchase and consumers consumer related uh, it can be of substitute or comparators it could be of from the value proposition economic emotional and functional take this ad for an example so what is the position it's uh, actually at uh, the functional position in which bride sab kuch right kar dega which means that the they are focusing more towards the functionality of this product how that product is functioning and how it works and how good it works that it uh, eliminates every kind of strain uh, stain from your uh, from your cloth so this is something we, we call functional positioning bright sub right kar dega which means the the powder is so powerful that it would eliminate each and every strain from your uh, cloth and from your fabric then we have emotional positioning uh in which um um a, a real estate service a zameen.com is uh, is convincing uh, the father is uh, to spend more time with their family and uh, the father has just bought a home so this is something which is which is an emotional positioning and then this is what we call the comparative positioning when when the product tends to highlight its priority uh, its uh, its preference over uh, ordinary powder arm powder ke muqable mein kare dugni safai when you whenever that you are comparing your product with the with the other product that exists in the market and you are comparing your and, and you are giving your superiority over the uh, the ordinary powder and when there whenever there is a comparison this is what we call the comparative positioning and uh, this is the economic position whenever the money and the saving and the and the value for the money is uh, is position this is what we call economic position or a price positioning khandan bhar ke kapdon ki dhulai sirf 10 rupaye mein which means uh, uh, for uh, for 10 rupees you can get to you can get to uh, you can get to wash um, all these bundle of clothes right so this is clearly an uh, economic or uh, price positioning right so uh we are going to discuss marketing mix in the um now um let's get this thing finished okay what is marketing mix it's the best way a marketer presents a good service to its consumer for his or her consideration it's a uh, marketer's strategic toolbox just like a dish that uh, that can be prepared several ways or a dj that puts together a, a collection of song so marketing mix is how you present your offer to your customer uh, using uh, the four p's of the marketing which is the product price place and promotion now when we get to when we get to um, discuss about the product there are certain things which comes under the product category which means um it's the brand name the variety or the 
um, the quality, the features, the packaging, the size, the services, warranties and returns and everything. Everything that is related to the product comes under product, which means if you tend to give a higher value or high, high quality that has more feature, the packaging is absolutely great and uh, uh, and and the size the the amount of product that you're offering is more the services along with the, your offering is more the warranty that you're offering the the returns uh, the services of the return that you're offering is more so that comes under the product now when we talk about price it's uh, market price the discount allowance payment method of credit terms it's how you how you want your customer to pay for it and whether you are uh, giving any discount any allowance any offer or any uh, benefit with, with respect to paying or not so any, everything related to the price is um, everything related to the amount of money comes in price now place is actually the availability how you make your product available to the to the people what distribution channel that you're um, that you're uh, that you're using uh, how much the um, the the uh, the distribution channel or the 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 retailers or the wholesalers is covering the area in which your target audience lives and various the inventory the transport and location all comes in um, under the the title place making the product available to the targeted customers and promotion which means uh, how you're going to promote your product through sales promotion, advertisement, radio, um, radio spot, sales force, direct marketing, public relation. What method are you using in order to communicate your message to your targeted audience? So this comes under the promotion, um, promotion title. So, so marketing mix is actually is a set of control variables that the marketers or the businessmen tend to control at their level that the firm sets to that uh, that can be set in in a way that that can influence the target market that they would uh, influence the target market to buy the product and the services is just like the equalizer uh, if if you tend to increase the level of the product which means giving high value high quality high features uh, more quantity now the 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 level of the product would increase from medium to high now now as you tend to increase this level the price also gets to increase as product as the price is hooked with product place and promotion and all that so the price if you are increasing the level of the price which means the product is getting expensive if you tend to keep that level low it means that the product is getting uh, economic or uh, it can uh, it can be affordable to the uh, other class or other category uh, categories or other segment of people as well now if you tend to increase the level of the placement which means you're making the product available at every location of the of the city of the ruler of the or the places you tend to you tend to have a very strong supply chain you need to have a very uh, strong distribution channel so that you can make your product available to each and every corner of of, of the city so that would increase the um, the cost for of the business and that would result in increase the price of the product as well if you tend to decide that uh, i would not may uh, would not want this product to be available at every corner of the city but only the selected uh, the shops and the uh, wholesale would be selling my product and services then the availability of the product would be medium but if you tend to decide that uh, the product should only exist in my um, factory outlet and would not be available anywhere else in the city so that the the placement would be at low position right if uh, now if the promotion is is high it means that you're using each and every channel uh, in order to promote your product and services you're using the television channel you're using the social media you're using the billboards you're using the uh, the radio spot you're using the uh, word of mouth you're uh, you're um, using the brochure you're using the 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 vertical banners you're using various methods in order to 
to promote your product and services therefore the uh, the consumer is getting to notice your advertisement each and everywhere so the promotion is high if you if you decide not to go for such a high promotion because each and every promotion that you do would increase the the price of your product so if you tend to reduce the promotion a little bit to medium and you were going only with the billboards and the television commercial that would be a medium uh, level but if you decide to do do not do any sort of promotion or any sort of advertisement and you tend to say that only through word of mouth we'll be able to communicate our product and the people who get to buy our product would be uh, talking about it and would be telling more people about it so and we are not going to spend any money for promotion so that way the product level would become slower okay <clears throat> now as this marketing mix are basically controlled by the marketers or the or the businessmen uh, consume there is something which is known as the consumer it is the best way the consumer gets to present a goods uh, or services to meet his wants and need need consideration now four seeds of the marketing with respect to the consumer's mindset is customer's need or solution customer cost customer convenience customer communication now these are basically the four c's now customer need is actually what are the need or the problem that the the, the solution is or the product is offering that would would be able to fulfill the need or or resolve a problem and uh, how much is the buying range of the custom customer as we call it the the customer cost how it's convenience for the customer to to reach to those products and the services and uh, and uh, whether the, whatever the advertisement the the uh, the marketers or the businessman is uh, giving whether the advertisement is making any sense with the customer or not whether the customer is able to communicate whether the customer is able to understand those advertisement and uh, would the adver advertisement is creating uh, any interest in the mindset of the consumer or customers or not so so consumer mix is also levels which are basically um, the consumer have set with respect to the product and the services uh, but just by looking at the certain product and the services they would tend to decide whether the uh, the product is offering high value uh, high benefit to us or medium or low value whether it's expensive whether it's medium or whether it's low cost whether it would be feasible for me to to reach and go and to buy the product or, uh, or con whether it's convenient uh, conveniency is uh, is high medium or low if the convenience is low it means i have to travel um, various kilometers or various miles in order to uh, reach a certain point where i can get to buy the product or the services so the convenience is low if if i can get the product at the corner shop of my house it means the convenience is is high because i can easily reach uh, to that product uh, without much hustle or without uh, any hurdle so if the communication uh, uh, if is high it means everything that the marketers are doing the advertisement the message i am understanding those message i am getting those message and i am uh, very much getting interested in those message and they the message has delivered to me and it has convinced me to buy those product and services so the communication level is high if uh, if the communication is low it means whatever the, the marketers are doing whatever the businessman is uh, promoting their product and the language that they're using and the method that they're using i am unable to understand it it's it's not creating any interest uh, in my mindset and i may not be able to understand their message so this is what we call the consumer mix now when we talk about four p's matching with the four c's this is something which which is very important which means the the product that the consumer uh, the the manufacturer or the marketers are designing has to match has to fulfill their needs and this and has to address the solution or the problem what the customer is facing the price that the marketer has set it must be in the buying range of the of the customers 
right the the place where the marketer has decided to make their product available it should be in the convenience level of uh, for the customer to reach there and to get the product and the the way that they are promoting their product they should be ab able to uh, uh, the consumer would be able to uh, would be in a position to understand those messages and they it should communicate with those uh, consumer in such a way that it would create a, should create interest in the product right so the marketers needs to uh, need to design the product in such a way that it should match the four c's of the consumer's mindset so it's just like the consumers uh, have four locks which are need, value, cost, convenience, and communication. And the manufacturer or the marketers are creating product that has four P's or four keys. You need to design these keys precisely in a way that 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 should match with the four C's of the of the consumer's mindset. If the product is designed in such a way that uh, the quality or the value is uh, is low and they are unable to fulfill the need and the, and the value of the consumer then this key would not fit into that lock and the lock wouldn't wouldn't uh, would not get unlocked and similarly if the price is high and it is uh, way out of the range of the uh, of the buying uh, of the buying range of the uh, of the consumer or customers then this key is not matching with that lock and the lock is not getting unlocked Similarly, if you decided to place um, your product at a certain factory outlet and uh, and which is far, um, which is inconvenient for the customers to get uh, to reach your product, so th that's again this key is not fitting with this lock. And again, if you're promoting in a such a way which which is not creating interest or uh, which the customer is unable unable to understand, then this key is probably what uh, what you're doing is not matching with this lock so only when you precisely get to understand these lock which are inside the mind of the consumer only through understanding those locks you would be able to design those keys on and that offer which exactly matches with these locks and only then when when all of these locks uh, uh, only the when these keys are exactly matching with those locks only then the uh, then the locks would be unlocked and the sale would take place now this is something very important that uh, the people usually uh, forgets is that uh, these keys and these locks should match so that they can unlock the sale so marketers four p's for the offer must match with the four c's of the customers otherwise there would not be any sale and um, seventh piece of the marketing when we talk about the services marketing it's product price place promotion and uh, three more p's are added to when we're dealing with this service uh, it's people process and physical evidence people uh, is related to the the employees that you have processes that how the how is it convenient for uh, uh, the customer to get the product um, and uh, what processes that the customer has to go through in order to in order to get the pro in order to get the product and physical evidence what proof that the the company have of superior and high quality or high high value so with respect to the uh, the people people's attitude what customer is actually um, uh, expecting is actually that the people or employees or the salesmen should uh, should care for the employees, uh, should care for the customers, and should serve them with a with a smiley face, uh, with a with a smile, and the process should be quick, simple, and easy so that the people would be able to cope up with them, should be able to coordinate with these those processes. The process should be easy for the customers to understand and and quick to 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 complete. And confirmation is something which the con customer is expecting that the, uh, the 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 marketer or the businessman should have some sort of certificate related to a regulatory authority which would prove their quality of service. So this is something um, which is which are basically the fundamental of marketing. I hope that you are able to understand. And uh, inshallah, in the next um, 
lecture we'll discuss something more so uh, till then take care of yourself thank you very much jazakallah